But speaking of something that wasn't pretty good, the first match on this marathon program was a Falls Count Anywhere match because now Ricochet and Shaky Nakamura are at each other's throats, and it's a, it's a blood feud, ladies and gentlemen, the likes of which we've never seen. The animosity has risen. It was a, <laughs> a great promo that fucking, um, oh, God, who was it? One of Bruiser's guys. It was, uh, it was, I think it might have been Ox Baker said, well, and, and Dick the Bruiser hit me over the head with a tire iron. And the animosity has grown since then. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that would kind of do it. But anyway, so of course, it's a Falls Count Anywhere match. No disqualification, no count out of ring. So they jump-started it and immediately went to the floor. And within two minutes, they were fighting in the gorilla position, and Ricochet was parkouring off the referee to attack Shaggy Nakamura. And then they go back to the stage and they go to the break and they come back. And as soon as they come back, Ricochet does a, was it a triple Lindy backflip out of the stands onto shaky and eight random security guards. And after that death defying move, which was ridiculous in itself, shaky took over for the heat with a, a box of popcorn. I don't think it was and, a triple Lindy, maybe a double Lindy, because I think a triple Lindy would need three different levels to jump one after another after another off. I think it was a, a different level of stupidity. Why did Oh, I, that's true. I didn't think of it from that angle. You're right. Again. And the fans are all around. As a matter of fact, I think he held on to one guy's, one fat guy's hand so he could get up on the railing and turn around and do that or whatever the fuck. If that's not another balcony jump that I saw here recently. And somebody's going to get sued and somebody's going to get killed and who gives a shit? It just, it's ridiculous at this point. So then, Shaky, back at the ring, pulls out a table, sets up the table, and then gets not one but two sets of foam nunchucks. And you can tell they're foam. <laughs> if, if there was any doubt... And by the way, people have taken exception to the way that I pronounce nunchucks. And they do, apparently don't know how to pronounce and think that I'm pronouncing it wrong because they don't know how to pronounce the nunchucks, Brian. How do you pronounce nunchucks? Well, I'm from the Northeast. I speak a little differently. Nunchucks. Well, see, but here's the problem. The problem is if you're like... We, oh, we only had Kung Fu Theater on TV every weekend, but go ahead. Well, no, was well, it my cousin Larry, I'll have you know, was a black belt in Taekwondo uh, in 1972. But nevertheless, a lot of people say, well, them numchucks, that's the shit kickers, them numchucks or nunchucks. Did you say numb? Numb. A lot of people say numchucks. He got him with the numchucks. And other people say nunchucks. But the proper Christian name, well, actually, it's probably not Christian because it's from the, the Far East, but <laughs> the proper name of the nunchucks is the nunchaku. So therefore, if you're doing it right, if you're going to give them a nickname, it's nunchucks. They got to bring you back. You've done more in the last minute to sell me on Nakamura than they've done in three years. You got to manage Nakamura. Oh, well, let me you tell could you You could be his something. Gary Hart. You could be the Gary Hart that Nakamura's Nakamura. Well, let me, let me, Nakamura needs something because here's what they did with the foam nunchucks. He takes them and he does the, the, the routine with them under the arm and et cetera, et cetera. And you can kind of tell right there that those aren't solid. But nevertheless, then he hits Ricochet several times with them. And again, if you hit somebody like that, even on the legs with real nunchucks, you're going to be able to tell. But then, did you see what he did with them after he had finished hitting Ricochet? No, this was one of those, I'll see what's on the other channel. Okay, matches. well, I had, I had to see, because this just had all the makings of chaos. He fuck, he's got one in each hand, and he's whipping them around, hitting Ricochet, and then he just flung them behind him. 
I mean, way behind him. And their foam, they took off like a rocket. And you could hear the crowd ooh because they were heading over the rail toward the front, front row. And they went off camera. But you can tell, you, as you saw one of the security guys sitting with his back to the ring, saw something fly by and turn to the right. But the, the fucking fake nunchucks, he threw into the fucking front row. A, people then know that they're fake, but B, if you saw what you even potentially believed was a real pair of nunchucks running at you or flying at you at a high rate of speed, you would duck or dodge or whatever. Somebody could have got fucking hurt, run over. He just threw them a fucking way. Well, if you thought the styrofoam head shears from Brutus the Barber Beefcake were a big mover for kids, when do you have the Nerf nunchucks? <laughs> the Nerf nunchucks. Nakamura. Now- now available at WWE Shop. <laughs> the way Leap and Lanny used to throw his frisbees out into the crowd. Yeah, Nakamura could just uh, fling nunchucks. <laughs> <laughs> just take a big bag and just start sidearming them at pe- people. Be dug like, what the fuck? No, and, and remember, did I've told you the Bruce Brothers hockey puck story, right? The, I don't know this one. No, we're in Johnson City, Tennessee, at Freedom Hall. It's the Heavenly Bodies, Tom Pritchard and Jimmy Del Rey against Ron and Don Harris, the Bruise Brothers. And the Bruises have switched babyface. They've broken away from my camp. And now they're having the big angle with the bodies. And we have a street fight match. And I worked out a spot with Tom and Jimmy. And it actually didn't need the involvement of the Bruce brothers. But as I found out later on, we got it. But w- one of the gimmicks that I had that I handed into the heavily bodies when they're trying to get some heat on the Bruce brothers was a slapjack, which was made from a men's dress sock. Like you can see this in the gangster movies, right? Or whatever the men's dress sock, black dress sock. And my gimmick one has some cardboard and a little bit of uh, toilet paper padding and some change in it to give it a little bit of sound and oomph when you hit somebody with it, but it ain't going to hurt anybody unless, you you know, you fucking put their eye out with it or whatever. It was a silver dollar. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. It, and, and so anyways, I've, I've crafted these things from long years of doing this in the locker room with the materials that ha- I had on hand. So when they get the heat, they grab the slapjack and they hit the fucking... Bruce Brothers over the head with it. Of course, they're selling it. They don't have to be hit with a real one to sell it. And then they, the bodies throw it back to me, and I put it back in my jacket. Well, now, later on, I'd worked out with Tom. Let's do this. I had a real hockey puck because they'd been playing hockey in the building. And I put it in another sock where it looked almost exactly like that, right? You couldn't tell if, if they weren't side by side. You couldn't tell. And what I was going to do was throw it back to Tom and him miss it, overthrow it where it go out to where it would land and skid out into the seats where somebody would pick it up and say, my God, they were hitting those motherfuckers with a real hockey puck, right? And I'd done this with the Midnight Express a couple times. and But <laughs> this was, and then Tom would miss the thing and that would allow the Bruce Brothers to get an opening to start making a comeback and peck him in the, you know, punch him in the face or whatever. But goddamn, I think it was Don Harris. When he saw Tom miss the gimmick, he panicked and thought, my God, the fake gimmick is going out into the crowd and it'll be exposed. And he rolled out and grabbed the fucking thing away from the fans and came back in the ring thinking he was going to use it to make the comeback. <laughs> and you've never, the fucking bodies were running and dive going, no, no, they were screaming, no, no, don't hit me for real. <laughs> and he was so fired up, he didn't notice the difference in weight. And he's swinging and he's running after him out on the floor and they had to say, no, God damn it. They stopped him for real to get the goddamn gimmick away from him. <laughs> But anyway, nevertheless, so... You know, I didn't know how much I was going to enjoy this Raw review until it started. (laughs) (laughs) As long as we don't have to talk about the actual show, um, Ricochet leaped off the top rope through a table. uh, Basically on his own, he was climbing the top rope, but Shaky kicked him, and he kind of sold the kick and then looked to see where the table was and then leaped off. He leaped off and went through the table and shaky pinned him down there because it was false count anywhere. And that was the end of that. 